Hello, this is Lillian welcoming you to the 1908th edition of the Enfield Talking Newspaper, dateline the 20th of June 2013. The readers this week are Joan, Beverly, Rod and myself Lillian with Cassandra and Colin on the controls. The items that we will be reading come from our local newspapers, the Enfield Gazette and Advertiser, and the Enfield Independent, and are their copyright. Our title music is Country Rock Polka, composed by Pat Prilly, Fernand Boulan, Harry Brewer, and performed by Jean-Jacques Perry, and is used with his kind permission. Local stories include Mentoring Charity Rewarded for Work with Troubled Kids, 1,680 New Places Planned, Deaf Bar is World News, and Eyes of the Night. If you are experiencing any problems receiving your Enfield Talking newspaper, please phone Diane DeJersey on 0208 805 6578. That's 0208 805 6578. She is your listener's representative and she will be pleased to help you. First of all, the special news items this week are, I have one here first, I have a correction to the notice that was read out last Thursday. Enfield Vision AGM is on Monday the 1st of July at 7pm till 9pm. It will be held at the Park Avenue Disability Centre, 65C Park Avenue Enfield, Please let us know if you will be coming by Friday the 28th of June on 83517259 and of course also if you will require transport. And the next one, this one is from Keith de Jersey about a reading machine which he is selling and he says for sale. Port set, that's P O R T for Tom, S E T for Tom again, reading machine. Five years old and still in good condition. Original price when new, £1,760. Asking price, 500 As well as reading a document, it will save the document if required. Call Keith de Jersey on 0208 805 6578 or 07887 507 471. And now over to Joan who will read the first item of local news. A charity that works with primary school age children with behavioural problems has won a prestigious award based on its stellar success right after only six months. Chance UK Enfield and Waltham Forest helps troubled youngsters who are faced by exclusion from school as well as intervention from social services or could even end up behind bars. After children are referred to the charity by schools, Chance UK matches them with adult mentors who are coached to work with the youngsters on their behaviour by focusing on ways to raise their self-esteem and deal with feelings of anger and aggression. And at the prize ceremony on Monday last week, at the headquarters of another charity, Nesta, in Chancery Lane, Central London, Chance UK won the Retrospective Evidence Competition Award from Project Oracle. The award, which comes with a £2,000 bursary, was based on research carried out by academics into the charity's programme of working with young people. Carolyn Hopkins, Senior Programme Manager for Chance UK in Enfield and the neighbouring borough of Walsham Forest, 
said that the charity was thrilled to have won the award. She told the advertisers that the cash boost meant that charity could broaden its scope and work with even more of the borough's children who are having problems with their behaviour at home and in school. We are delighted to have won this award and delighted to have started working in the borough of Enfield, she said. Our programme will really make a difference to children in the borough who are in desperate need of support from a mentor. The project, which started in Enfield in January, relies on volunteers, and Carolyn said that it was currently in need of more mentors to sign up in the borough. We need fun, confident and reliable people to work with the primary age children, she said. If you are aged 18 or over, there is no upper age limit and are focused but also flexible and creative. Then we would love to hear from you. People interested in signing up should be able to commit two to four hours every week for a year as well as being able to attend other sessions. For more details, visit www.chanceuk.com right slope mentor. The next information evening for anyone who is interested in volunteering with Ch Chance UK will be taking place in the community rooms of Southgate Asda next Wednesday starting at 6.30 p.m. A new bar for deaf people comes complete with staff who use sign language and a sound system that lets people feel the vibrations of the music. Paul Cripps of Edmonton has been deaf since birth and is the co-owner of the Deaf Lounge in Seven Sisters Road, Tottenham, which opened three weeks ago. The 31-year-old and his business partner, Damani Peer, have been running deaf social clubs and deaf raves for the past seven years around North and East London. They decided to start the bar after Mr. Cripps had problems ordering drinks, talking to fellow clubbers and sometimes even getting into clubs. Kevin Cicado, Mrs. Peer's brother-in-law, has been helping at the bar and said the vision was to open a bar where the deaf could hang out, have a drink and socialise with both deaf and hearing people. He said, we have had an overwhelming response from both deaf and hearing communities. We had an email from a deaf lady in Australia who is planning a trip to London just to visit the deaf bar and we also have a deaf guy from Sweden visiting next week. There is a high demand for more clubs like this in London. The deaf lounge has bright lights, a sound system that allows the music to be felt through vibrations and a pool table. It hosts various deaf clubs such as those from Tottenham and Archway and offers British Sign Language classes for those who wish to learn. The Deaf Lounge is currently looking for funding for more um, British Sign Language teachers and some video DJ equipment. Enfield Council is planning to boost its primary school expansion programme by £44 million to provide thousands of places for pupils over the next six years. Tonight, the authorities' cabinet is expected to allocate the money in order to deliver an additional 1,680 places, bringing the total number of new council-funded primary school places to 4,000 by September 2017. The money comes in addition to the £22 million first phase of the expansion programme that was approved in December. Research commissioned by the Council has found that an unprecedented rise in the birth rate during recent years and a boom in families moving into the borough has led to a steep rise in demand for places on school rolls. The authority's challenge is shared by many boroughs across the capital, with recent warnings by the Greater London Authority that there will be a shortfall of 90,000 school places across London by 2016. Enfield's Cabinet Member for Children and Young People, Afer Oran, said, 
We are committed to meeting the increasing need for school places in the borough and the approximate £69 million investment in our primary schools paves the way for us to provide thousands of new school places by 2017-18. We are absolutely committed to providing superb facilities in our schools and ensuring every child in Enfield has access to high quality schools providing excellent facilities so that every one of our young people receives a good education and is able to fulfil their potential as they get older. The Council's Cabinet report acknowledges that secondary schools will also have to be expanded as the projected influx of academies and free schools will not meet the growing demand for places in the coming years. John Kay, Conservative Shadow Member for Children's Services, said The Council has taken two years to come up with a proper, structured plan to expand schools. Only in the last year have they come into action, and therefore they've been playing catch-up. At long last, they have accepted that the way to expand provision in Enfield is by working with free schools and academies, as the government does not allow local authorities to build new schools. We are beginning to see a more sensible approach by Enfield Council. Police hope CCTV cameras will help cut down the number of prostitutes operating in Enfield. Andre Smith, Safer Neighbourhood Sergeant for Upper Edmonton, says prostitution has been a problem in the borough for the past 10 years. But with a new camera in place and another one due to be installed within the month, he is optimistic the culprits will be easier to find. Sex workers can usually be found loitering at night at the southern end of 4th Street, Snell's Park, and Langhedge Lane, where the new camera has been installed. Although a couple of women operating in the area come from Enfield, Tottenham or Barking, most are from Eastern Europe, particularly Romania. Sergeant Smith said it's a different world on those streets at night. When you speak to the women, some say they lived in Romania, but the money's not good. They were approached by someone who invited them to come to England to earn more money, and they did. Others were already prostitutes in Romania. But as well as the women, we also have to tackle the handlers who bring the prostitutes to the streets and the curb crawlers. They are the ones driving it. Under current legislation... Officers can only arrest someone for prostitution following two previous cautions within a three-month period. A total of 12 arrests have been made since October last year, as well as approximately 60 cautions, with six of those given during an operation at the end of last month. Two months ago, police also closed down a brothel operating in 4th Street. Sergeant Smith said a lot of legislation got brought in because of those women who are drug dependent. We try to help them fight the habit by referring them to outreach programs and to the council. Sergeant Smith also wants to get a mobile sexual health clinic to attend the area as well as health officers to provide advice and support for the women. Mary Mason CEO of Charity Solace Women's Aid said, We welcome Enfield Police's recognition that women in prostitution are usually very vulnerable and need support to exit. However, a mobile sex clinic is not enough. Women are frequently controlled by pimps, exploited by controllers and abused by those buying sex. Arresting and criminalising women in prostitution sadly does not deal with the issue. Policing the women only moves the problem to another area or the women into off-street prostitution. We need a whole new approach across London that involves supporting women who are in prostitution, helping those who want to exit and focusing on the real perpetrators the pimps, the controllers, and the buyers of sex. Now to come to Andy Love, MP, with a view from Westminster. The headline reads, 
event to mark the centenary of World War I will have to strike a right balance. Next year is the centenary of the outbreak of World War I, and there is much to commemorate and learn from a conflict that saw the deaths of more than 16 million people and sparked revolutionary change across the world. But it will be a strange affair. A balance will have to be struck between remembering the millions who died in the conflict and the natural urge of the victorious nations to celebrate their role in winning that war. From the mud and the blood of the Somme, where more than 19,000 British soldiers died on the first day alone, to the carnage at Gallipoli, World War I had a decisive impact on all that followed. It changed the way people thought and lived after 1918 and altered the course of history by facilitating the Russian Revolution and the rise of the Nazis. I hope that the events to mark the centenary milestones between 2014 and 2018 will err on the side of reflection and take into consideration the effect of the war on ordinary people, regardless of where they come from or what side of the conflict they were on. World War I was a defining moment in human history, and it is right to be proud of the men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice so that we could enjoy the freedoms we have today. But we should also remember the impact of war on individuals and nations. And remember, too, that just one death through conflict is a tragedy. The 16 to 20 million people estimated to have died as a result of World War I alone is nothing short of a catastrophe. Next year will provide an opportunity for us to reflect on those dreadful statistics and how humanity still has a long way to go before war truly becomes a thing of the past. A mother and son are getting ready to lace up their hiking boots as they prepare for a challenging non-stop trek from London to Brighton. Nita Shah, a mother of two of Southbury Road, Enfield, is teaming up with her 19-year-old son, Atish, in a bid to raise money for the British Heart Foundation charity. And on Saturday, they will embark on a gruelling 100-kilometre hike to the south coast, which they have to complete in under 30 hours. The fundraiser will involve a day and a half of non-stop walking, taking in a scenic route which starts at Kempton Park Racecourse. Nita admits that even with her intensive training regime, the prospect of the punishing hike is daunting. I am quite nervous, she told the advertiser. I get nervous thinking about things like, will I finish it? Will I do it? But I am determined to get to that finish line. The duo wanted to find a way of raising money for the British Heart Foundation after the family saw at first hand the devastation that heart disease wreaks. Sixteen years ago, Nita's husband, Rajesh, underwent triple bypass surgery and has since had a stent, a small mesh tube used to treat narrow and weak arteries, inserted into one of his arteries. Nita explained that this, combined with losing her mother-in-law to heart disease, left her determined to raise money for the foundation, which carries out research into the prevention of and cures for the disease. Atish added, the main reason I'm joining my mum in this is in memory of my grandparents, who passed away a long time ago. Despite the fact that the weather has been anything but benevolent in recent months, Nita and Atish have still been out on all, in all conditions preparing for their mission. They have been regularly doing 15-hour walks at weekends to build up the muscles in their legs. 
scouts across the bur- borough cleared litter and shoveled compost as part of a special week dedicated to helping the community. Youngsters from across Enfield, Edmonton and Southgate took part in a number of projects to boost the area during Scout Community Week. Among them were members of the 18th Edmonton Cubs, who spent an evening clearing litter from the streets around their headquarters at Bush Hill Park Methodist Church in Wellington Road. The community-minded youngsters collected several bags of rubbish and voted a dead frog as their find of the night. Sally Simmons, leader of the 18th Edmonton Group, said, Scout Community Week is a great opportunity for scouts in my group to help out and have fun at the same time. It's great having the chance to show our community what we can do. While they were working, the Cubs had several lovely comments from people, and one man was so impressed with what we were doing that he called into the church and donated £20. Also getting their hands dirty were the Palmer's Green Explorer Scouts, who cleared rubbish and shoveled compost behind the Ruth Winston Centre in Green Lanes. Yvonne Quigley, manager of the centre in Palmer's Green, appealed for the Scouts' help to clean up the area and make it ready for planting. She said, The road was unkempt, full of tossed litter, weeds, and the trees hadn't been pruned for years. It was in a terrible state, and so we wanted to get together to clean it up and make it look nice for the community. Following the youngsters' efforts, planting is now taking place in both areas to brighten them up for the community. Members of the 11th Southgate Beaver Scouts helped to plant four hanging baskets at Christchurch Lodge in Chalk Lane, Cock Fosters, as well as picking up litter in the grounds. It helped cement links between the group, which is based in Chalk Lane, and the sheltered housing scheme as the Beaver Scouts visit the residents of Christchurch Lodge every Christmas. And I have a column by Jane Johnson. Uh, She is the Enfield Borough Commander. And she says, The number of car crimes in Enfield is still very high, roughly 4,000 in a year. Last year, we succeeded in reducing these crimes. But what often occurs to me is that drivers can do a lot to help themselves. Vehicle crime can be costly and inconvenient. But there are several things you can do to lower your risk of becoming a victim. Car crime is opportunist and criminals are on the lookout for easy targets. So I urge you to take a few simple precautions that will help prevent your car, van or motorbike being singled out. This may sound obvious, but always try to avoid storing valuables in your vehicle whenever possible. If you need to leave something, keep it well out of sight and preferably in a locked boot. All too often we receive reports of people leaving valuable items clearly on view, only for them to be stolen. This commonly includes sat-navs and laptops. Criminals will cause several hundred pounds worth of damage just to steal some visible loose change. Likewise, a coat or bag may tempt a thief to gamble that it contains something they can sell. Vans feature heavily as power tools are a favourite for thieves and I ask all van owners to take extra care. Always ensure your van is locked, even when it's parked for short periods, outside a delivery address or a property you're working in. At night, take all tools out of the van and place a sticker in the window to let thieves know. Parking in a well-lit, busy area is preferable to a dark, quiet spot. But thieves will visit retail parks and larger car parks to find an easy target, even during busy periods. We are working in partnership with other agencies, including Enfield Council, to find new ways to tackle all types of vehicle crime, as well as building on proven successful methods. We need vigilant members of the public to report suspicious activity to us. Please don't assume that someone else will do it. 
Finally, I would like to mention number plates which are stolen for use in other crimes, such as theft of petrol. There are now special screws available, making number plate removal virtually impossible without breaking the plate. These are widely available in motoring shops and safer neighbourhood teams also have a limited supply. Look out for crime prevention events in your area or contact your local team via www.met.police.uk and they will do their best to supply you with some. The first 40 Hall Farm Festival went down a storm despite the inclement weather on Saturday. Despite periods of heavy rain, more than 500 adults and children flocked to a fancy dress and talent competition, as well as enjoy the delights of the farm in Forty Hill and an evening of live entertainment. The day raised hundreds of pounds for Enfield Mental Health Users Group, One to One Enfield, and cat charity, The Scratching Post. The organisers thanked supporters for their efforts. Leon Wilkinson said, It was a lot of hard work, but it turned out to be a great night of music, worthwhile for the charities too. The festival developed from the success of the party stage at the farm last year to mark the Queen's Diamond Jubilee and included performances from Coldplay tribute band called Cold Place, Hollywood, and the Assassins, the Red Indians, and festival goer Sophie Wallace added, I left on a high. The bands were fantastic. A group of sixth formers donned their pink T-shirts as they took part in a charity fun run. Nineteen girls from Highland School in World End Lane, Enfield, ran the five-kilometre race for life in Trent Park on Sunday along with hundreds of other volunteers. Every year, the race helps raise thousands of pounds for Cancer Research UK, and this year the girls have done their bit by helping raise more than £800 for the cause. Running in small groups, they all managed to finish the race in less than 50 minutes. We have now reached the end of side one of this tape. Please stop your machine now, take out the cassette, turn it over and start side two.